What's going on people? Back with a bang. This is The Money Management, back here to bring you guys another video today. So this week was an eventful week. It was the last trading week of September and actually I was trading from Spain. So I'm going to just quick give you guys a quick little show of where I was trading from. We were trading from around here in the hotel uh, when it was possible. But for the rest of the week, yes, it was pretty difficult to be active and live in the markets. But however, that being said, we still made money in the Discord. And now we're going to look at SPY because this week was another historic week of this year, another eventful week of this year. Here is the SPY chart. SPY hit new yearly lows, which is what I explained in my last video was my expectation for this week, the final week of September. On the week, it was down 3.62%. On the month, down almost 11%. Year to date, it's down 25%. That is crazy numbers for SPY. So there are a couple of different things, a few different things I like to mention when I talk about SPY right now. One, we're very clearly bearish. We're trading below all the moving averages. The first few days of September, we started to push up. And then since then, we just tanked. Another thing is, this is also a good time to get long-term shares. Those of you who like buying up shares for the long term, who like to invest, well, if we look at a bigger scale, check the monthly chart for the last few years, look at that. Historically, we trend up. Look at that from 16, 2016 all the way to 2020, 2021 last year, we were trending up. So now it's a bit of a pullback along the way. So we've reached the lows of where we were last year in January. But as I mentioned, it is a great long-term opportunity. Again, if you look historically at the S&P 500 ETF, you can see we are usually going to be up long-term, right? We're normally up long-term. So that's what I want you guys to take in consideration. Now this week, I only made three trades. Two of them were AMD puts, one at the beginning of the week, one in the middle of the week, and then the very last trade I made yesterday was a spy put, um, go, well, two different spy puts going into next week. So if we look at my expectations, right, in terms of the market, yes, yeah, September is known to be a very red month, a month where we see a lot of bearish momentum, a, lot, a month where we see a lot of stocks dropping. But that doesn't guarantee that the first day of October, everything shoots up and everything rallies. Now, it also doesn't guarantee that October takes us back to over 420, over 425, over 430. I mean, in theory, yes, I'm expecting a better October than we had in September. But like I said, you still need to be careful when it comes to your positions because, where were we? Here, 415. August was the last time we were around 415. In September, we, we briefly uptrended to around 410, and then we just dropped. So what I'm telling you guys here, what I'm trying to inform you guys about is we might get these little pushes up as we usually do every single month. It doesn't mean that the rest of the month is going to be bullish. It also doesn't mean a guarantee that the rest of the month or sorry, not the rest of the month, but whatever plays you get in, especially to the upside, are going to print, going to pay, going to pay you guys back for the faith you have in those plays. Now, that being said, once again, I do expect more green in October than we had in September. But you've got to be careful of the pushes up towards the moving averages before these sell-offs. There are going to be plenty of opportunities to make money, as there always are each and every month. But you guys need to manage your positions properly, manage your position sizes properly. Take trades where you can limit your risk and maximize your reward. This is clearly a bearish trend right here. SPY is clearly bearish. So once again, just because September is over doesn't mean you just start jumping into calls, especially not those calls which expire in three days, in seven days. You know what I mean? So on and so forth. So if we look at some different stocks that are... Um, at a discount, I'd say. You've got stocks like Apple. You've got stocks like Tesla. You've got stocks like Meta. And I'm telling you, these are the kind of stocks that I'll be looking at for long-term plays. Apple under 140 is what I call a bargain. Tesla, especially after the stock split, at 260s is a bargain. You might even check out something like Netflix at 235. No, it's not at the lows of under 190 like it was a few months back. But 235 is still a very valid price in comparison to the highs of over 400 where we were just under a year ago. So me looking at this, I'm thinking Apple, when it can finally bottom out, maybe find some support around 135, maybe touch the lows of 126 again, I'll look at buying shares. And for those of you who are new to this investing game, you might buy a share or two. You might buy 10 shares. You might buy 20 shares. 
But what I want to say is, don't be surprised if Apple continues to drop. So you might buy shares at 133, and it may drop all the way down to 127. But in that case, don't panic and sell out of your position. I know a lot of people will do things like that, especially those who are not used to long-term investing. Because if you're used to options expiring, you know, at the end of the week or in a couple of weeks, you're going to try and cut your losses ASAP. You know, like I said, I understand that when it comes to options, but in long-term shares, that's not what you want to do. So this is not financial advice, but another thing I want to say is during the bear market at times like this, do not leave. If you're used to trading options through this kind of market, you can get used to making money long-term. If you don't want to invest, this is the time to learn. If you don't want to trade, this is the time to learn. This is the time to build. And of course, you can do so many different things. You can paper trade, you can learn, you can build, you can observe, you can watch, you can hang in the lounge chat with us live and you know hear us talking on the voice chat. But take this opportunity and take advantage of this market. Don't leave. Don't leave in the bear market. So many people leave in the bear market. I've seen it so many times and I'm telling you, it's going to be completely worth it if you stay in times like these. So we're going to keep moving forward. We're going to keep making things happen in this market. But like I said, there's a few different things, a few different things you can do at this time in the market. One of which is invest in your long-term plays. So here I have ExxonMobil. Reason I have this up is what this is one of the stocks I usually watch. And it's a stock which hit a level of support this week at your daily zone there and started uptrending. It's currently just under the moving average. And I want to see if it gets rejected by the moving average before it starts downtrending again. Another thing I'd like to see if it breaks above the moving average, I will look at taking a position in calls. You see those kind of run-ups here from 84 to highs of 89? That's the kind of things I want to be trading. Those are the kind of swing trades I want to take. Those are the kind of setups which you can see, you know, even if you don't catch it at the bottom, you might catch it the next day or here on the run-up. Another stock I want to look at right now, Tesla, of course. So on my watch list last week, Tesla for a few different reasons. I think long term, again, this is a great stock to invest in. Short term, I think it's bearish and it can drop down to this weekly support around 252. So that means it has enough around, you know, 12, 13 dollar drop available. And again, if you're going to take one of these trades, give yourself enough time on it the drop, for the drop to happen. Take profits where you see the profits. Of course, I'm going to have a little brief look at Walmart as always. Maybe I'll make a video on stocks that I'm looking at for long term. Maybe I'll also make a video on stocks to watch this week. But of course, the full watch list will be available in the Discord as always. But here we have Walmart. Still trading below the moving averages, although it started to push up yesterday. Here, it's dropped below the daily support zone. I'm thinking it's going to still drop a little bit further. Maybe a couple dollar drop. And then if it breaks that, we could be hitting 125 real soon. Then, one thing I want to remind you guys is if Walmart does drop I'm expecting a steady downtrend to around 120 what 125 not a big sell-off like we had here back in August also when it comes to the airlines and cruise lines as I mentioned I've been traveling those airlines are still going to get back up and running you know there's been a bit of a hold off on them right now not as many people are traveling at this period of time but when Christmas picks up when the new year picks up you can guarantee that people are going to be traveling again and so on and so forth going to next year. So American Airlines, if I can get shares anywhere down here, just under $12, you know, 1190s, 1180s, whatever, that'd be great. But at the same time, if I want to get a call or a put on this, you're probably going to have to day trade it. That's what I'll be looking at for American Airlines. If you want to swing calls on this, I'll look at 30 to 45 days out, honestly. Um, I'd say $14 calls is my target, you know, get back up here. Uh, again, that would be 30 to 45 do days out. And uh, one thing I want to highlight is as oil prices rise, this is also bad for the airlines. So it affects their operation costs. So that could still keep these kind of stocks, American Airlines, Delta, JetBlue, etc., dropping. Again, as oil prices rise, it causes difficulty for airlines. So be careful if you are trying to buy shares because, again, short term, as those oil prices keep going up, we could see these stocks continue to drop. Let's take a look at a couple more stocks right now. First off, I'm going to go with Micron, ticker symbol MU. So Micron had earnings this week. As you can see, the stock didn't actually do 
much due to the earnings. Um, but one thing I did want to point out is you can clearly see on a daily chart here, it closed slightly below the moving average, but it looks like it is starting to break towards the upside. Now, with a bit more volume, a couple more green days, we could see this start moving back up towards the 21 day moving average at 50, just under $53, and then eventually push up to the daily resistance. So here, $60 is the price target for Micron, and I'm talking long. I'm talking end of October, beginning of November calls. That's what I would definitely look at for Micron. As I mentioned in my watch list for last week, it was one of the few stocks I was looking at for calls this past week, but I did not end up taking it. Netflix is another one I want to look at before we look at some tech. So Netflix is in a very weird position right now because it's kind of been fluctuating in this channel between, I'd say, right, $250 and around $220, which is a decent range for Netflix. It didn't make moves like it did in July where it jumped up, you know, 30, 40 bucks in a month. Like I said, the past couple of months, we've been in this kind of range between 220 and 250. So for October, I want to see how this moves before deciding how to take it. I mean, again, long term, Netflix is at a huge discount. You might see the run up from the past two, three months and think, oh, I've missed out. I've missed on the 40, 50, 60 dollar run up. That's not the case. Longer term, I'll definitely look at 260 calls, 270 calls for Netflix. Of course, you know, 250 is the first price target. That's just a $15 gain. And then, of course, if you break this daily resistance, get above this moving average, break this resistance here, we could look at pushing up a lot higher. Don't expect it to gap up to 334 just like that, because remember, this gap down was due to earnings, but expect a stair step towards those levels. So let's look at tech right now. I'm going to look at QQQ. One thing that stands out to me again is this is very bearish, but QQQ longs look like a great play. That's down to a few things again. Tech sector has been heavily beat by this bearish run. Tech sector long term will be on the upside. I mean, it will start uptrending eventually, right? That's what we expect, most likely. And another thing is tech is at its lowest it's been since, here we go, since October 2020. So once again, that's a two-year, you know, two-year push-up that we've lost now. From October 2020 to what the highs of November, December last year, we've dropped back down to the levels of October 2020. So if we can run up from here, let me just mark that out for you guys. If we can run up from where we were in October 2020 up to highs where we were last year, that's almost a 100% increase. You know, you're looking at 70, 80% returns with those shares. So again, if you're trying to take calls because you want to make options money, then again, look at 30 to 45 days out, plot out your zones here, I'd say support and resistance wise. For QQQ, you're looking at getting back up to 280s. I think that won't be too long before that happens. I wouldn't be surprised if that happens during October. Then we're looking at the daily resistance up here, back up at around 320. Again, end of October, beginning of November is what I'll be looking at for QQQ calls. So that's mainly it. Remember that you've got AMD and NVIDIA as well. TSM are in that sector as well. You've got a lot of stocks which are at a huge discount right now. Again, Apple longs, QQQ longs, Spy longs, AMD longs, Tesla, Netflix longs is what I'd be looking at. Meta, I'd throw that in there as well. Those are stocks which are beat up. Those are stocks which have long, great long-term return potential. And those are stocks which I think I might be buying this month to add to my long-term portfolio in this month of October. So overall, Thank you guys once again for watching this video. Please remember to drop a thumbs up on the video if you did enjoy it. Also drop a thumbs up if you did not enjoy it. Please drop a comment, subscribe if you're new around here, and of course share these videos with more people. It helps when you get these videos out to more people. It helps more people learn about options. It helps people realize they're not in this alone, that with many of us here together. So yeah, that's mainly it for today's video. As always, come check out the Discord. You guys know the deal. We're on there live chatting, voice chatting the whole day. Also, make sure you check out the Stock Option Starter Pack. That is a group of 10 videos you guys will have access to for life. In addition, make sure you check out all my social media, my TikTok, my Twitter, my Instagram, at The Wealth Prince. And as always, be back here next time for another video. Thanks a lot for watching. I got money making, you got money making. See you guys next time for another video. Peace.